Ladies and gentlemen, season 4 is up and running at full speed and if you want to make your journey more pleasant and easier, here are my top suggestions for weak ores that you must have in order to play successfully in Mythic Plus or Raid. The first thing that you should do is go and get a weak aura pack for season 4 dungeons in Mythic Plus as there are so many important boss and trash mechanics that you need to be aware of that playing blind is probably make it extremely hard and in some cases even impossible to tackle the fights. The one weak aura pack that I'm going to suggest to you has a lot included inside but even if the information is too much for you, you can always trim it down later on down the path and to give you basic idea of what this week or a pack does, for example, it has those cast bars for incoming important skills, along with icons and timers for different abilities, and it works for both boss and trash mechanics. It goes without saying that every dungeon and every boss and trash mechanic is included in this week or a pack, and you can get the link of it in the description of this video. And now before you guys go into the comments and start posting about how bad my UI is, which it is, and you're more than welcome to do that, keep in mind that you can customize how this week or looks by just simply moving the different parts and different sections of your screen. Once you go into the week or options and you expand that specific one down to the list, you're going to see different groups that you can move around. The timers have a different group that you can move the cast bars have a different group, the icons are a separate section, so feel free to customize and move these around so they suit your UI the best possible way. One more important tip for this week or a pack, it actually contains icon and information for the item that you're gonna be picking for the last boss in Altaras. The piles of gold there give you an ability that's either melee, range or something that you need to throw, and the weak core is going to display an icon to let you know whether or not you need to go into melee to cast your spell to break the shield. That's a very important piece of information and I was going to suggest a separate weak core that did that, but since all of that is included in this one already, there's simply no point. And before we close this section, you can find similar weak core packs for the raid, but I'm not going to suggest any of them, as they contain so much information, which I think most of it is irrelevant for me, so I am better off just finding small weak auras that display only the information that I need for the specific bosses. And yes, you can argue it's the same for the M plus weak aura packs, but in M plus you need to be aware of everything that happens because there's less people and you have more responsibilities. So you need to be able to react at every spell and every cooldown that's being thrown at you, which is not the situation in the raid, where you only care about specific mechanics. The second gem that I'm going to suggest to you is a weak aura that adds the spells and the abilities of the mobs with their timers and cooldowns on their nameplates. For example, over here I can see that this Warden has 6 seconds left before he can cast his frontal ability. The Weakor has all the important abilities added to the nameplates and I find it extremely useful because let's say you're assigned to kick a spell from a mob. If you don't know when they're going to cast that spell, you might end up just sitting there not casting anything and waiting for them to start casting so you can press your interrupt button. If you have this weak aura though, you will know the cooldown of their spells so you can freely use your GCDs until they're ready to start casting and then you can wait and press that interrupt button. This weak aura is also customizable, you can change the size of the icons and the position that they have respective to your nameplates. In fact, by default, the icons are on the left of the nameplates, but since I have a different information displayed there, I use the X and Y controls in the options to move the icons on the bottom right of my nameplates. You can also use the scaling option to change the size of the icons and customize it to fit your UI. There is one very important mechanic that is not included into the week or a pack and it concerns the last boss in Ruby Life Pools. This week aura is going to show you a text and an icon with the location where you need to drop the next fire puddles so that the winds that follow up blow them off of the platform instead in the middle of it. 
I find the Suikora extremely useful not only because it keeps the platform clean but also in phase 2 where more people get a debuff and drop puddles this is basically the location where you want to stack them respective to the boss which not only makes the fight much more easier but it also helps the healers heal through them. And of course all those benefits will be there for you only if people follow the arrows. Another very important tip is to pick the right talents before the start of the dungeon as this could either make or break your key. There are many examples like the three boss in Algetar Academy if you have poison the spell you must take it to save the tank or the number of purges that you need to perform in knockout offensive both for the trash and the boss mechanics. It's very easy to forget to switch your talents at the start of the dungeon so having a weak aura to remind you to do so is extremely important. I've created such a weak aura for the restoration shaman and I'm going to link it in the description below but if you're playing something different you should look at lago.io to find something specific for your class and spec. And last but not least your best friends in both mythic plus and raid are going to be either the dbm or the big wigs add-ons. They provide timers for upcoming events and abilities so you can pre-plan and use your cooldowns correctly no matter if you're a healer or dps. And here I can suggest a weak core that transforms the timers from these add-ons into a scrolling timeline bar which is just a different way to visualize everything but I find it much more intuitive and easy to understand. This weak aura works with both dbm and big wigs timers and currently on this footage I have both of them installed in the beginning of the season until I figure out which one of the two is better and which one I want to use. As a result the weak aura is displaying the timers from both add-ons but if you have only one of them installed obviously it's going to be much more cleaner and not as bloated as what you see on your screens right now. With that being said, those are my top tips for the weak auras that you should be using in season 4 of Dragonflight. Let me know in the comments below what are your favorite picks and suggestions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now get out of here.